All right, yeah, I still haven't got a proper uh, tripod, so when I go to do the zoom, it's probably going to go wobbly for a little while. The primary thing I do want to talk about is going to be this spot here. Oh, I also have to try to not touch the tape. Well, I think if I just... No, the table, as long as I move... Yeah, I should be all right. We'll see what happens. I just want to hold on to the table or lean on it. Um, who the hell are you? I have to go look. Hold on. It's the fourth art, the Austro-Hungarian Fourth Army dude. Offenberg, you son of a bitch. So, I don't know if you remember, but part of the Katowice um, conference agreement is that the Austro-Hungarians had to follow the Berevich dictum. And if I remember correctly, based on my bookmark, it is essentially hold on to the territory you have at all costs. Um, if the uh, enemy uh, takes a position, you try to take it back as soon as possible, uh, especially before they... Um, and you never attack unless it's to take a... Uh, that's, the, that's the kicker of the Bravich dictum. Goodness gracious, Chris. Uh, well, and you, you attack as soon as possible before the enemy can dig in or secure the position. I'm not doing the quote <laughs> properly, but you get the idea. It's been a long time since I've stared. Uh, it's been a long time since I've done lots of things, man. That's what drives me up the tree. Anyways, I'll say this. This was a major no-no. The, the um, Offenberg here... Oh yeah, I've got to talk about the Vaughn thing later on, about the capital V Vaughn and the little V Vaughn. I found out about that um, this week, uh, like how to use it. I mentioned it in, I think, last uh, live stream. I was asking people if they knew uh, what I should do with that, uh, like if I should be using the capital V or little V. Um, anyways, I found out for myself. So, this position should never, they should never have gone uh, uh, beyond this, but they did. It was breaking the Katowice Conference Agreement. That is not a piece of territory um, uh, that they had. They just took that opening. Um, anyways, it's caused a monster amount of grief for me as the Russian Ar uh, Fifth Army. Remember, every, everybody knows now it's like a mini scramble to the Marne, or to the coast or whatever, sorry. Um, uh, uh, mini uh, Many scrambled of the sea in the sense that they know that the, it's the end of November coming. There's going to be, uh, everybody's going to hunker down and come January 1915, there's going to be trenches all over the flipping place. Uh, so every little spot counts. This thing caused me, so I ended up giving up. I had to give up this uh, piece of territory because I really want to nail this mother. Uh, it caused me so much grief. It's because it cut off so much of the line of supply, my line of communication. Uh, just by popping that troop in here, cut it isolated so many of my guys. And the way I do my uh, uh, logistical constraints, I don't allow any headquarters to just uh, supply anybody willy-nilly. Uh, you can only supply the people that are assigned to you that turn kind of thing and so on and so forth. Wait until you get, uh, or I get into later on about how more many constraints I've put... Okay, I'll give you a quickly. Uh, if the headquarters moves, an army headquarters moves, that's it. They can't do F all for the remainder of that turn. They can't supply an attack, a counterattack, receive supply... They can't do anything. I'm sorry. They just... You can't move and pick up sticks, a giant army HQ, move them around in four days and expect me to do this, that, or the other thing. Ain't gonna happen. Core HQs, that's another story, that's another thing entirely. I'm actually giving Core HQs a bit more oomph in the sense that you can move Core HQs around. They just can't create the impact that you may want, which is, oh, I can move a Core HQ over here and just nail some son of a bee with 20 uh, supply points of an attack. Nope, it's not going to happen. Oh, anyways, I, I'm really happy with the way I'm going with this. So it... Like I said, it, it's giving me later on in uh, thinking about things of how to do stuff. Like, you can't move an army HQ around very often. But uh, I certainly want to start moving core HQs around. But they cost money now because I've, uh, in my world, uh, I just can't uh, create them out of thin air and so on and so forth. Oh, 
Jeepers jumping. I can't wait to get the January 1915. You have no flipping clue, man. I know. It's like, well, then why aren't you there yet? Because I want to do this the way I want to do this. It just, ah, oh, I can see it. It's just, oh, it's... Mm, mm. And the, uh, uh, the Arabian conflict zone is just, uh, uh, I can see it baking in the oven. How's that? I can see the, I can see it bubbling and I can see all the nice little things happening and yummy, yummy. You know, like turning on that oven light, it's just like, ooh, I can see some nice, anyways, I read about the 8th Army. Uh, Brusilov in the 8th Army. I was going to start moving away from Stanislaw over here. I'm going to go into, uh, we'll go into micro land over here in a bit. I read some pretty interesting quotes that are rather nasty about Brusilov and I went, okay, screw this. He's not going to actually withdraw. He's going to stick, stick it and s stay here as long as he can and let the Austro-Hungarians try to force him away from uh, Stanislaw and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so this guy's not moving. I did want to move them tough. I moved some guys down here. Gonna make it make it hard for the Austro-Hungarians. Um, I'm bringing the replacement units that were in Cernovitz uh, towards here. I'm using a trench marker. Um, just putting a little R over there to hide the <laughs> the shovel, and that's tough. That's the way I'm doing it. Um, also, I'm not didn't do a hell of a ah, I effed up big time around here man I, I blinked with the third army I blinked uh, uh, it's a long story short but I blinked I shouldn't have moved some troops over here I blinked I got I, I, I freaked out and then realized holy F I can't um, do this I can't give up this hex here and allow the uh, the Austro-Hungarians to start taking the uh, rot me around the river so I had to bring in some troops here, but I had to thin me out over here and just have to take the chance. It's the way it goes. Um, so here we go to the big kicker. So like I said, I gave up some territory here because I think this is more important to take because he's, uh, that, that son of a bitch is um, cutting off my uh, line of communication and supply. What the hell's wrong with that cat? Uh, so here we go. I can't use this. Uh, yeah, I had to move a ton of troops to get my line of communication and supply in. Um, this Opal Cheney Brigade, remember, um, these are uh, like militia brigades in my world. Um, they can move around uh, willy-nilly, but I can't use them uh, for attacking purposes. They re refuse to attack. Uh, either that way or they're so ineffectual it's kind of pointless to even uh, consider them have uh, being there so I'm using this guy this guy this guy and this guy it's 16 strength points I can do that because I moved around enough uh, units uh, towards the fifth army HQ here to uh, supply them fully so I'm gonna go from five to one to supply all these little buggers to nail that son of a bitch over there and hope to God I uh, get him out of there he's defending across woods I've got this all written down, but let's just go with it. Uh, I can, yeah, let's just go with this. I, I can give you all the specifics later, but does it really matter? I, I put in, a, there's a lot of stuff here. As you can see, 16 strength points. This guy's got four strength points. Um, the fourth army uh, headquarters, regardless is what's going to happen. They have two supply points. They're going to um, uh, try to punch the Russians in the nose. Uh, that's exactly the s um, amount of supply points they need for a uh, to supply fully supply counterattack, regardless if they are forced to retreat. Because they have four uh, strength points, the Russians are going to need uh, two hits to force a retreat. For the Austro-Hungarians, if you recall, it's one third the total amount of um, uh, hits, uh, uh, sorry, strength points that they have that you uh, can force a retreat, Let, you know, besides like not being in town and all that crazy nonsense. Hold on, I gotta get something to say. Just give me a second here. Mister, I just, yeah, I just would like something a little bit, get rid of the whatevers. So there you go. I you probably couldn't hear that anyways. Anyways. So it's going to be minus two to the die roll for the woods. And yeah, let's get into that. So you guys can see that now. Let's get into there. Uh, 
And I'll bring it up because that's the more important bit. Hold on. I go get my reading glasses. Yeah, I think I had to. I was, yeah. Okay, there you guys can see a bit more. All right. Oh, no, if I do that, then you won't see the die. Uh, the, um, hold on, how are we going to do that? I'll figure it out in a minute. So if you see at 16, I got a pretty darn good chance, but with the minus two, it's going to hurt. So let's see what happens. Two hits. I really, like the Russians are just, it's a waste of, well, not a waste. It's expensive. How about that? Do I love this game? You're done right, I love this game. Even though, like I said, I'm not playing Der Velkrieg officially and so on and so forth. Um, who gives an F? If you can't figure it out by now that you want to play uh, Der Velkrieg or not, um, based on my whatevers, um, hmm, interesting. I think it's got uh, lots, lots of good stuff, for sure. Well, look at me, man. Anyways. I think it uh, also allows me, and uh, especially when I'm starting to look at the mid-war, I think I mentioned that before with the, the upstairs. I do have to do a video about that as well. Um, with uh, the Battle of Verta and the mid, uh, mid-war thing. It And, oh darn it, I keep forgetting that person's name. The neighbor's mentioning that, um, yep, now that's where you'll see the game shine, and I agree. I just was naive, man. Probably still am. Here we go. Roll high. Okay. Has the... Um, let's see. Let's just see, man. Can you see that? Well, I'm not going to... You can see. It's a five with a minus two. So that means... They're forced to retreat. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Since we've seen something like that. All right. So what does that mean? As far as I know, that means um, they counterattack at times two, not times three. But um, well, let's make sure I get this right. But it's fully. Um, okay. Let's just hold on. Here. Well, obviously, well, I know they're only going to lose one. Uh, one hit instead of two, but if that's what the Russians wanted to do um, Just I do so I, well, I don't play it play a game at you know at this game at the rate you're supposed to I guess um, To remember all the rules all the time Counterattacking units non-retreating except Ill infantry is tripled so it's doubled. Okay. So it's eight uh, strength points. So here we go with a plus one to the die roll. Ouch. This is really, really going well for the Russians in this one. Uh, 16, oh, sorry, eight with a two. It's, it's a one hit. So and I'm probably obviously going to move some dudes back. Let's, um, well, I'm just going to pop these. They're going to be absorbed into here. All right. And these guys, and I'll tell you who they are in a minute. They'll have to take the, I'm going to, they'll take the hit. The one hit. And they are... I think I did that right. Uh, they're the, oh my god, the 21st Infantry, Infantry Division. Uh, that's because, why do I say that, oh my god? Because um, I just um, popped them in for the um, the 7th Army that I uh, made up out of scratch while I'm going to move some people around. So that's it. Done. Now we're off to Wonderland, I guess. See what happens. <laughs> Still got a while while to go. Hope you enjoyed that. See ya. Bye.